We're making this film to show that how students think their lessons should uh, their lessons should be taught, so they can make their lessons better. It's about like getting the teachers to understand what the pupils want, and to sort out like get communication between the like, pupil and teacher, get a, a stronger connection between them. The most important thing a teacher should take away from the pupil's point of view is whether is whether that method actually get actually gets the lesson objectives across and that whether the pupils have actually learnt what they were meant to learn by that using that method of teaching Hello, my name's Adam Muffley and I'm camera assistant. My name's Charlie Kelly and I was cameraman. My name is AJ Gill and I was cameraman. My name's David Goodman and I was the interviewer and the production assistant. My name's Moya Ugunyanka and I was the sound man. I'm Inter Gordon Martin, interviewer, presenter and one of the script writers. I'm Patrick Dale and my role is the producer director. I'm Adam Goodkin, and I was a producer director. I also helped write the script. Before the proper filming could begin, we interviewed Dr. Sagar, the science teacher whose lesson we would be filming. What do you hope to gain from this exercise? I hope to gain from this exercise the fact that um, will the cameras that you'll be using be an aid for me within my classroom? Will I be able to use the um, information gained in the future? What made you agree to participate in this project? I'm actually a teacher who's only been teaching for three years, so I'm always looking for new ideas and ways to improve my teaching, and I thought that this would be a great way for me to actually evaluate my lessons and to see how I could improve my lessons in the near future. How much say should pupils have in the way they are taught? It's important because at the end of the day, they are the ones that are learning. They are the ones that want it to be challenging for them. And why it will help them is that if they have actually had an input to the lesson, they will find it more exciting for themselves. Do you think people should tell teachers what they think of their lessons? I think it's very important that um, pupils tell teachers what they think of their lessons. It firstly tells the teacher how their lesson is, how the, how the lesson went, how they can improve the lesson, and it also tells the teacher how interested the pupils actually are with their lessons, and do they need to change their teaching style in the future to make their lessons more interesting um, for the pupils to learn. Thank you, Dr. Sager. With a local television company filming what we were doing, all of the filming of the lesson and the interviews with the science teacher and pupils was to be done entirely by us. Good morning, um, 717. Uh, today we're going to um, continue our theme with chemical reactions, okay? Today's lesson, we're going to have a couple of objectives which I want you to concentrate on. Okay, now, by the end of this lesson, you will, firstly, understand that different metals react with different acids in different ways. You will also learn which metals produce hydrogen gas when they react with acids. Now. The major theme of this lesson today is that I want you to concentrate on two components of practical work, and those are observation and analysis. So hopefully you'll develop your skills with observation and analysis as we go along throughout the lesson. Okay, can you now put your goggles on please and start the practical. See. Now. Okay. What I want you to do is, now, put this in there and remember to keep your thumb tightly on top of the test tube. So that we could get their views on the lesson, we spoke to some of the students. So what are you doing at the moment? I was just putting nitric, nitric, nitric acid, you would have to do it like copper cube. Um, do you know what you're looking for to show if it's a positive result or things like that? To see if, like, if it pops. 
Gas was released. Not gas. Practical lessons or in theory lessons in Practical. my Practical lessons, they're more fun. Hydrochloric acid. No, no, that's not true. You know, yep. No, we're doing hydrochloric. You meant to have a spit ready and put it in so you get the gas through you. What are you looking for? Yes, exactly. We're it's looking to see if it's hotter it or colder. If hydrogen is released or not. And um, if it like changes colour. So. So do you know why hydrogen is um, involved in the test tube? Um, I'm not sure. Do you know what you're looking for in your experiment? Yeah, if hydrogen was released and it was a gas release. And do you know why hydrogen would be released? Um, no, I'm not, not sure. Okay. Okay. Do you think Dr. Sega should have explained that before you started? Um, probably. Why don't you ask Dr. Sega? Would, would you think? Would you ever think of asking Dr. Sega that? Yeah, but I forgot when I was born. I just number one. And number two, is it better when you put the splint in or the sideways? Um, when we put the splint in. Yeah, so you you can comment on that in your um, analysis. I can explain to the rest of the class that you, you can only get a decent hydrogen test when you put the splint in. Yeah, when you put it directly in, otherwise it takes too long. Okay, make sure you comment on that. Can so we ask you a question? Yes. None of your pupils seem to understand uh, why hydrogen could be evolved. Do you think you should have explained that to them beforehand? That will be explained towards the end, of the, the end of the lesson, why there is a chemical reaction. That will be in the plenary and the discussion part to actually say that a reaction has occurred and why do you think hydrogen is being produced? And they will say, uh, oh, because a chemical reaction has occurred and products are being formed. That's why. So I was leaving for the discussion point. Okay, you so we've just got about ten minutes to go on this practical. That didn't work. You got the? Did you get the pot? Right. Now that was a um, very interesting practical. We just did there. Now, let's take the metal um, magnesium. Now, when magnesium reacted with hydrochloric acid, what did most people find, Mansoor? Yes, hydrogen, hydrogen gas was released. Hydrogen gas was released, and how did we know hydrogen gas was released, Sanjeev? Because when we put um, the flame into the test tube, we made a little squeaky pop. Squeaky pop, excellent. And why was Sunil's group finding it wasn't being released? Why do you think that was? Explain, please, Joshua. Well, when I had my finger over the test tube, I felt some pressure coming up towards it, and he might not have, he might have taken it <coughs> too early. That's a wonderful word, that is, Joshua. Pressure. What does anyone know? What pressure actually means? Go on, then, Joshua. Like a force pushing up. Like a force. I'm going to write that down in a key word. Pressure. Excellent. <laughs> We try to see if um, acids always um, make hydrogen gas if we place a metal in there. Some of the metals reacted with the acids by producing hydrogen gas, but some of them produced the gas, but not hydrogen. We tested the answer was yes, hydrogen was produced except for what? What did you think of Dr. Sega's style of teaching? He teaches very well, so we understand stuff. So you think he helps you? to understand what he's trying to teach better. Yes. But the way he explained everything to us was quite good, so we understood what the lesson was about. Yeah, it was uh, good because um, he explained everything to us, what we had to do, it made it really clear. OK, Joshua, which one you got in there? OK, keep your thumb on, keep it shaking. All right, keep your thumb on there now. You've got it. When, as soon as you release the, your um, thumb, can you feel the build-up of pressure under there? What did you think of Dr. Sega's style of teaching? I think it was OK because it was kind of interactive with the children, but I think on, in some areas it could have been better. At what areas were like, these? Sometimes with the, with the fact that he didn't come around to all of us sometimes and um, with, the, with the reading on the board. Maybe go around and help people a little more. Right, so you thought he could have gone round and helped you or yeah. something like that?
Um, well, what I've ever done, instead of like a one Bunsen burner for two tables, I'm going to put a Bunsen burner on just one table. Why would you do that? Uh, so, because um, we, we had to get up, and um, so we had to go and get a, light it and come back. And in the meantime, probably some of the gas was being released. Right. So if it was on one table, we could just quickly got the Bunsen burner, took our finger off and just... So you think it would have had the experiment yeah. go better? <laughs> I thought overall the lesson went quite well. Uh, the um, objectives were met, um, the practical was completed by most students, but I think a little bit more time was needed on the practical, and I tried to account for that, and that actually re resulted in less assessment at the end of the lesson. But overall, I was very happy with the lesson, the way it went. Do you think the people understood what you were teaching? At the end, when I gave a plenary, the questions that I posed uh, um, were the objectives were complete. They um, actually understood what the objectives were, what they were meant to have learned from the lesson, and they actually informed me of what they actually knew about the context of the lesson, and everything was satisfactory. One of the students said that he, they could have done with more guidance from you when they were actually doing the practical. What is your reaction to that? Well, I actually wanted them to work on their own and to see the pitfalls because the constant, we were concentrating on observation and analysis. They need to find out, as chemists themselves, the importance of observation and analysis and the importance of actually reading instructions because that is the most imperative component of a practical lesson, L um, looking at the instructions yourself. If I'd actually gone through it with them at the beginning of the lesson, each stage, Firstly, it'd take up too much time, and secondly, I'd, I think they wouldn't enjoy the practical because they'd have seen everything that had occurred. How do you think this field will help with future lessons and lesson plans? I'll be able to see how I can improve the practical aspect, how I can t help the pupils more, and how I can actually plan my lessons so that the, t um, the pupils get more out of the actual lesson itself. Thank you. Do you think that you, as a pupil, should be, uh, tell the teacher things about the lesson, whether you thought it was good or not. Yeah, because, um, so then uh, he knows that we've learned something. I think they should have a lot to say, because if cause some people might find the teacher being really clear, others, they might think the teacher's either going too fast. Right. So I think they should just probably put their hand up, say, sorry, sir, I think you're going too fast. And I think if the teacher's nice enough, she, she'll probably slow down for him. If the children in the teacher may explain it properly, the teacher should know about it. For example, a teacher says something and we don't understand it, we can tell them um, to say it in a simple way. <laughs> it's important what the pupils think, not just their lesson plan. It's important what they think of their lesson. And that's how pupils can learn better. Some students would be like reluctant to, to, to tell the camera what they really feel because at the end of the day they might be scared that we'll show it to the teacher and then they won't really lose their inhibitions. Now we've come to the end of our program. We hope you enjoyed it and have been persuaded to listen to your students' opinions about teaching. Thanks for watching. Bye.